Am I sitting weirdly? I don't know how I should sit. I'm wearing socks, that's the problem. This is not foot finish hour. Okay, wait. Whatever, you're gonna look at my foot. I don't care, I'm not wearing shoes. Why am I wearing shoes in summer house? Well, I wear slippers, but you know what I mean. Hey everybody, welcome to the Julia Kamanga Show. Hope you guys are good. And this is the official first Film Friday. I've been promising this since last year, guys. I think literally one year ago. Before that, first of all, do you like my new place? It's cute, right? I know. So if you don't know what my new place looks like, it's because you did not watch my moving vlog. And that means you need to go and watch my moving vlog. I'm not putting pressure on you. I'm just saying that you need to do better. Just a bit of housekeeping. First and foremost, my relationship video that I keep promising is going to be delayed. Because the other half of my partnership had to go home. He does not live here. So when he comes back, we're going to finish it. We only shot a bit of it. It will make sense when you watch it what I mean by a bit of it. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting, so just, I'm sorry, just please hold on tight. But thank you so much for everyone who submitted their questions, you're dope. Second thing, I wanted to do a video reviewing Black is King. But I'm realizing the beehive scares me more than I thought it did. I was like, if I do this, I'm gonna critique some things and they're not gonna like it. And I don't know if the risk was worth it. But if you'd like me to do a, a review on Black is King, just let me know, DM me, put it in the comments, I don't know man. Oh, it's the third thing, I think I fixed my autofocus, so hopefully it just stays. If I keep going in and out of focus, I guys, I tried, I know why I, I fucked it up. I was testing something out a year ago and I never changed it back and I forgot all about it and then I saw what I did. So hopefully it just stays still. So today I'm actually gonna do two things. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the new South African Netflix rom-com that came out, Seriously Single. If you have not watched it, you can check it out on Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, just get it, it's 99 Rand. I'm kidding, I understand that we're poor in this country because you need data and data is expensive, so it'd be better. But if you can watch it and you have a bit of data to spare, check it out because I always say support local films even if you will not like them. This is not a foreshadowing to how I feel about them. I know I keep saying I don't like rom-coms. And I understand most of you are probably like, why do you keep reviewing them? First and foremost, two people asked me to review it and that's enough momentum for me to do anything. I realized I do actually like, I like every genre of film, but if it's done well, I'm there for it. That's why I have those few rom-coms that I enjoy because they're done well. There's something unique about them for me that I enjoy. Cinematically, okay, fine, they, they lack, they always lack. They are the same three camera structure, same angle, same this, same that. Like, do cameras move ever? in rom-coms. The structure works because it works, I guess. Um, and as my team leader says, why fix something that ain't broke? Well, I feel like, I'm not saying fix it, but I think you can edit it a bit. Look, I'm just saying that you could do more camera work in comedies and rom-coms and romantic films. It really won't. Just, come on guys, just move the camera a bit. Like sometimes just sh shake up the, just. So yeah, I don't really hate rom-coms. It's just that I get bored from the fact that they don't try to more ever like ever and the thing with rom-com in africa in south africa let me rather say is that they follow the hollywood structure and i understand the hollywood structure is there because it works but it works for hollywood i don't think it works for everybody i really i've seen romantic films in other countries that do so well you know like love action and stuff like that in the uk like they do well because they have a unique take on romance. It's kind of got that structure, but not really. Like, it really bends the rules a bit. You take a structure and you destruct it and make your own thing from it. Like, you can take it to learn from it, but it can't be what you follow every time. And I'm just gonna say point blank, like, it, it doesn't work for South Africa. I don't think we're those people. I'm not saying we're not the people to make rom-coms. I'm saying we're not the people to make Hollywood rom-coms in South Africa because it just doesn't work. Here's a few reasons why. Number one, rom-coms in America have a particular aesthetic, right? That South Africans have to keep up to. So you have to be a middle-class woman to be in a romantic film in the first place, which is kind of boring. Because it seems like every film is about middle-class people. And if it's about poor people or lower-class people or working class, whatever, it's mostly people who it's showing poverty porn in some sort of way. But it's always like, if you're poor, there's no love. Your whole life is suffering. And then if you're in the middle class, your whole life is romance. And that doesn't make sense. Or crime. Like, <laughs> you know, that's South Africa's like, just stuck in a box. The point is, I just feel like in South Africa, we can't keep boxing the way 
we do things. We can't keep trying to literally copy and paste other people's things. And that is my problem with the film. Because in all honesty, I don't care about the main character story. I know that sounds asshole but I did not buy it. I don't care. She's a chick who just loves love so much that she's going to be stupid and just fall for any dick and do stalker and shit to get the dick that she wants. And then goes back to him after he marries someone else because he's like, I want to be with you. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, I don't care that her story is like a lot of the other stories that I've seen on TV. It looked like it was trying to do something very unique, but there was something too fast paced about the main character's story that I couldn't, I couldn't get with. It is trying to be something that is not Three simple rules, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, do not give out your real phone number Number two, do not talk about your exes Number three, don't have sex with a guy more than once Otherwise it counts as a relationship Pick what you want her to be Pick what the story is going to be from the beginning And go with it You know, my one friend said it kind of just lost the plot at some point And I kind of get what she means There was a point in the middle where the main character I didn't know where she was going And it was in a very confusing way Not even like an intriguing, ooh, what's going to happen? Is she growing? Is she stagnant? What's happening? I don't understand what's happening in the story, you know? It sucks because she's like a dark-skinned female lead. That's amazing. Like, you know, we don't really get that. And her story was flat and she was goofy in this weird way and she was a caricature. And why? I don't know. People don't act like that, guys. Like, I get it's a comedy, but she doesn't have to act like a ditz. You know what I mean? Like, there were funny moments, you know, when they kept bringing her luggage and stuff like that. Her reaction to that kind of stuff was funny. And, you know, the moment where she realized she didn't want to marry the guy was kind of nice, like, you know, she was an, an actual real person. Those small moments are not good enough in a whole film. In all honesty, I wish that her friend and her friend's relationship was the main character. Her friend was funny. I liked her friend. Okay, my, I have a critique about the friend, but I can into that. Her friend was funny. Her, her relationship, the way it was coming, as much as it's stereotypical about the whole, oh, I don't want to find love. And then you find out, oh, you know, she actually really likes this guy. But I like that her reasoning was not the typical, oh, because I've been hurt. She watched other people get hurt and didn't want that to happen to her. Because I relate to that shit. I, I used to be that person. And like, I've watched people get hurt, so I don't want to jump into a relationship because I could end up in the same pred predicament, right? I like that about her. She had such a deep story to it. It's like they wrote her really well or to me really acted her well that she was a person. She was hilarious and she was just fun to watch and I liked her romantic partner. I don't care about the main character. I wish she was the main character and then her friend was a secondary problem. I apologize. I forgot to actually mention the critique I had about the friend. In the beginning, they created her to be this very overly sexual, you know, funny fat friend kind of caricature that I found very unnecessary in the beginning. I understand that she's, you know, very like out there and she, you know, sleeps with whoever she wants, but I think that we need to be very careful as people creating a secondary character who's a fat funny friend who's sexual because that is an overdone stereotype so we need to ensure that they are not established as just that in the beginning but also something else it's like they were sophisticated social media loving you know erratic it's like they wrote like five character traits down like in sims they put like five traits and then they were like that's her done gave her a romantic aspiration once family that's it also the idea that they put the mother in, but she, she didn't play a big enough role. The mother gave, gave her the idea that she needs to find love and a romantic partner, but they placed her there twice. That doesn't make sense to me. If this mother is an overbearing find out, find love, find love, find love, find love kind of thing, let her do that. Let her text her and be like, yeah, find love. Where's the love now? When's your boyfriend coming? You know what I mean? Like her mom knew about the people she was with, but was not really in the story. I don't really understand why I bring her in the first place. To be honest, we could have just skipped all the parents or met her at the end and she's just, we find out later she's the reason that this girl is so romantically erratic. You know what I mean? But you didn't have to bring her in the beginning and never bring her again and then bring her again at the end as if she had an important role because she didn't. Why does, you know, her friend hate her mom? I understand like she doesn't like the idea of romance, but there's not enough of a story there for it to make sense when she said the devil won't think. I think she said the devil won't fuck you, I can't remember. But like, you know. It's just there were too many things that had holes. It's like, oh, let's just add the usual thing. She needs an overbearing mother. She needs to have erratic personality. She needs some guy she's obsessed with. And that's about it. I don't know, man. The story was just missing something because it's an American. It's an American story in Africa. And I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be an asshole when I say this. And I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't write rom-coms. I'm not saying that, you know, 
you shouldn't you shouldn't look to who has done it first to adapt from there. What I'm trying to say is that it needs to be its own thing. It needs to be African and fully be African. Because also that whole thing of people not speaking Vernac is very weird to me. Because I don't think Netflix personally has a problem with anyone speaking their language. They have Spanish shows, they have Portuguese shows. Maybe they do and then Netflix you need to just change your mind about that shit. Because in reality South Africans don't speak that much English to each other. And this is coming from someone who only speaks English. It bothers me because I am very aware that these characters don't speak English only and they are speaking English. Especially like just secondary characters would generally speak Vernac before they speak English. Le because I need know the struggle. I'm like, I have to always explain, Ish, sorry, I don't know Zulu. I don't know Sutu. I don't know Tsana as well. You know, like sometimes I have to explain and be like, Ish, I didn't hear what you said. Because people speak that much Vernac in South Africa, in Johannesburg alone. There is no way you're gonna hear it three times in a phone, guys. I am so sorry. There's no way friends are having conversations in English only, unless the only language they speak is English. If someone doesn't want to read subtitles, that's their problem. To be very honest with you, if there are moments where I'm like, Ish, I don't feel like reading a subtitle, I'm the one who misses out on the great content. <laughs> that's talk to the, like, I don't know, just make it real because you want your film to be so good that people watch it a second time and not watch it once and be like, ah, dude, it's fine, don't. Don't bother, you know? And I do know a lot of people who watched it and unfortunately are not gonna go back and watch it again. Which sucks. Because I really want African content to do well and I'm not here critiquing like it's easy. I know it's hard. I know writing a rom-com is hard. I've been trying to write a rom-com that I would enjoy watching myself for a very long time. I've been trying to figure out how to make that structure work and I haven't been able to formulate it yet. And I understand it's difficult. I really do. And I'm not even here being a dick like, you should do better. No, no, no. But I'm just being honest. Like, it bores me when I see like rom-coms in South Africa because I already know. I already know it's going to disappoint me because it's always following America's structure. And it sucks. It's like South African films. Okay, we have the ones that do really well, right? But if it's a really beautiful new genre, they always cut out half the script and then the story ends up being shit. Or we have a full script of rom-com that's from America. Or we don't really get access to the really amazing films that are out there in, Af in South Africa or in Africa because there's no platform for us to watch it sometimes. Maybe there's a rom-com out there in South Africa made by South Africans that is so beautiful, but we'll never really see it because there's no way for it to be shown because it doesn't appeal to America. Why are we trying to please America? I don't understand. And I understand why I got a 4.1 out of 10 rating because, um, yeah, I think the 4 is mostly from the secondary characters. But yeah, all I have to say is that seriously single was seriously boring. I'm sorry. I really went in there being like, just go with a clean slate and see if you enjoy it. Ignore what everyone has said about it and see if you enjoy it. And now what everyone's saying about the film makes complete sense. I just am disappointed. Like, I'm sorry guys, please, you know, honestly, when a nice rom-com comes out from South Africa, call me. I think the one rom-com that's nice that I still haven't watched because I don't have Showmax is Happiness is for Letter Word. People have said it's really nice. And I really want to watch it because at this point, I really want something that's unique.